wheels are so stable. It's like 40 mile an hour winds, but feels like a gentle breeze with these wheels. <laughs> Right then, sponsor time and Sirocco <laughs> dropping back in to sponsor another episode, which is pretty cool. So we've got a classic British evening this evening. Um, yeah, what time is it? It's like just gone eight o'clock at night. <laughs> it is it's windy, it's cold, and it looks like it's gonna rain in a little bit, judging by those clouds. But Sirocco, they've got me covered today. <laughs> so this is their Furka Pass cycle jacket. I wear it all the time, keeping me nice and toasty. Plus when the rain inevitably does fall, which looks to be quite soon actually. <laughs> Those table! Um, then yeah, it's showerproof, so it'll keep me nice and dry. Um, but yeah, Sirocco do all sorts of gear, and I wear their stuff on every single ride I do now. But bottom line, they do some really nice looking cycle kit that's really comfy out on the bike, and it's really, really great value as well, if you uh, if you ask me. Um, but yeah, if you want to check out some of their stuff and help me out a little bit on the channel as well, I suppose, then use my link in the video description below and grab an extra 10% off your order. Um, so yeah, pretty cool. Anyway, I'm gonna finish up my ride before before the rain starts bucketing down too much. Uh, and you guys are gonna stick around hopefully and uh, have a look at these wheels. So yeah, let's do it. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another, could be considerably worse, <laughs> Chase Fellow production. My name, as always, is Luke. So over the years, I have used a number of different wheel sets on the bikes that I've owned. But today, I've got something, oh, something, something a little bit spicy, a little bit spicy for you. So uh, yeah, all of these wheels here, they've all got one thing in common, and it's not just the fact that they've all been ridden by an absolute legend. Okay, so, so it's it's steel steel spokes. All of those wheels uh, were laced with steel spokes, and I wager like 99% of all bike wheels ever built really have been have been laced with steel spokes. But um, but yeah, these ones down here, uh, off uh, off camera, <laughs> these these are built these are built a little a little bit differently. Now they're from a company called Fastboards. You might be able to see that up there. And I've reviewed a pair of their wheels before back in 2019. Um, so yeah, here's a quick recap of that. So yeah, these fast sports wheels are incredible and they are the real deal. So yeah, you can check out the full review for those wheels up there, but rode them all through 2020. Really tasty pair of wheels, those ones. Um, oh, and a big, big thank you to my brother who I dragged out of bed at like seven in the morning to drive around Richmond Park in his Volkswagen Polo <laughs> to get those shots. We just like glued the camera to the roof. And they're basically <laughs> <laughs> Give me a workout here. Charlie, slow down a bit. <laughs> slow down. Uh, anyway, these here, these are Fastboard's brand new Ventu S series wheels, named after Mount Ventu in France, which is the scene of some of the most intense climbing stages on the, on the Tour de France. I believe. Now, full disclosure, I haven't paid for these wheels. Fastboards sent them to me for free to uh, to review. Now, they are a little bit more premium than what I usually cover, but they're really, really cool. So I wanted to kind of showcase them. And up to up to now, I've ridden them 700 miles. Well, just over 700 miles. So without further ado, uh, yeah, let's um, let's check them out. Right then, so here are the wheels. This is the front wheel specifically, and I've left the old disc brake rotor on there. So I run 160s at the front, and you'll be able to see I'm actually running quite a quite a fancy rotor. So these are Shimano Fresa. <laughs> I think that's how you pronounce it. So that's not how you pronounce it. It's obviously pronounced freezer, like the appliance that keeps things cold. Not Fresa, which, <laughs> depending on where you're from, could either mean animal excretion or potentially a Dragon Ball Z character. Um, <laughs> although I think that's also pronounced freezer. Um, anyway, while you're here, if you could, um, yeah, bosh me a subscribe, that would be really freaking cool. Um, anyway, let's crack on. Um, and these are, yeah, it is quite expensive, these rotors. They're good, but they are expensive. But anyway, that's another topic for another day. So these rims here, I've gone for their S4 variant. Hopefully you can see that there. So these are 45 millimeters 
deep. Now you can go for their S3, which are 35 mils deep, or S5s, which are 55 mils deep. So you can go a little shallower or a little deeper. Now I've said this before, but I think 45 mils, well, 45 to 50 mils is a good kind of all rounder rim depth. If your primary focus is, uh, is climbing, then you might want to go with something a little bit shallower to save the weight. And again, in the same vein, if your primary focus is kind of time trials on the flat and, and racing, then you might want to go with something a little bit deeper. But yeah, this rim depth here, in my opinion, is, is, is perfect for all purpose road riding as it were. Now I've gone for tubeless ready rims here because I like I like running tubeless tires but if you want to go for kind of a full race spec then you can get these rims in tubular as well and they're a little bit lighter but we'll get onto that topic later on. Okay so the actual profile of the rim is a nice classic shape really nice smooth curves all the way all the way around the rim but uh, yeah nothing too out of the ordinary here so they will require rim tape to run tubeless and you can see in these pictures that I've slapped on some rim tape there. And these come out at 26 millimeters wide on the outer and 19 millimeters wide on the inner. So basically perfect for running 700 by 25 C tires, which is what I'm, what I'm running here. And the transition between the, the rim and the tire is, is nice and flat, which is great for kind of cutting, cutting through the wind. You don't want the rim too narrow or the tire has a tendency to bulge out a bit like a light bulb over the rim, which can cause some extra aero drag. So not ideal, but these here with these tires, these are pretty, pretty much perfect. Okay, so the carbon layup for these rims is UD or unidirectional, which is pretty standard, but the way they've done it here, <laughs> it is next level. Rather than hiding kind of anything under a layer of matte black paint, like the like the Elite wheels from, uh, from the last video, for example, they've laid down the carbon fiber perfectly and then sprayed a UV protective clear coat over the top so you can basically see it all. The carbon has this like metallic sheen and when the light catches it right, it goes from kind of silver to gold. They, <laughs> these look so tasty. Plus the decals here, these aren't just stickers. These are actually beneath the clear coat, so these won't these won't ever won't ever peel off, which is uh, which is pretty cool. Basically, these these are by far my my best looking wheels, and when they're on the bike, oh, they look so tasty. Now, one other little detail which I've noticed are these little holes here. So you've got one on that side of the wheel, and one on that side of the wheel there, and it's the same on the same on the rear on the rear rim too. Now, these are actually drainage holes, so the notion is. When you're riding along, uh, if it's a kind of torrential rain and maybe you go through a deep puddle, you might end up getting some water in the hollow cavity of this rim here through the kind of nipple holes where the spokes attach to the rim, some water might get in there. Without those little drainage holes there, you'd have a real job getting the water out and you might actually have to disassemble the rim entirely and get, and get the tire off and the tape off and stuff and <laughs> kind of shake it around. But with that little drainage hole there, you can just stand the wheel up and the water should just drain out, which is pretty cool. Not often something you see on cheaper rims and it just goes to show that fast ports have put a little bit of extra thought into producing these. Right then, the, the spokes. So <laughs> this is really cool and this is what drew me to check out these wheels. So rather than the standard steel spokes, these wheels here use bladed carbon spokes and I'll throw up some uh, close-up pictures so you can get an idea of what they look like. Now, the vast majority of disc specific wheel sets use 24 spokes on the front and the back, which is relatively high. And that's because disc brakes create quite an uneven torsional force on the hub. So the wheels need to have a slightly higher spoke count to, to kind of cope with it. But due to the nature of carbon spokes, Fast Sports has managed to get away with quite a lot fewer actually. So these only have 20 spokes on each wheel. So four less, four less on each wheel, which is, yeah, which is pretty cool. So the obvious benefit to these carbon spokes is that they are a little bit lighter. So a pillar 1432 is a comparable steel spoke. And for the same length and width, they are 6.5 grams each compared to just over three grams each for these for these carbon spokes. In addition, fast sports claim up to 340 kilograms braking strength, whereas the uh, pillar steel spoke tops out at about 300 kilograms. So they're a little little stronger on the braking strength too. And finally, and this is kind of the uh, the big winner for carbon spokes, they are inherently stiffer. So steel has some level of elasticity, so will stretch under load far more than carbon. And here. 
Fastport say that for the same load, these carbon jobbies will deform 50%, 50%, sorry, less than steel spokes, which basically leads to a much stiffer wheel overall. But we'll get onto that later. Something cool about these spokes, however, is, is the fact that these are actually user replaceable. So a lot of the wheels that are built with carbon spokes will actually physically bond the spoke to the wheel. So you can see that with these lightweight wheels here, the end of the spoke is physically bonded to the carbon of the rim. So that means if you were to accidentally break one of those spokes, pulling the wheel out of the boot of a car or something like that, that wheel set is pretty much done for it. It's, it's not like you could replace the spoke yourself anyway. Whereas these carbon spokes here, these use a bit of a hybrid design. So yeah, let me explain. Uh, right, forgive, <laughs> forgive my slightly grubby mat here, but <laughs> this is a pretty traditional steel spoke that I've got here. So let me zoom in for you. On one end, you've got the head of the, of the spoke, and this is what laces into the hub in the center of the wheel. And then the other end is threaded, and this is what threads into the nipple, which sits on the rim of the wheel. And the notion is that these are super easy to replace. So if you break or bend a spoke, you can easily pull it out and put a new one in. Now, exactly the same can be said of these carbon spokes here that Fastports uses. So again, let me zoom in here. Now, they use aluminum fittings on each end. So on this end here, you've got the head, which laces into the hub, and the other one here, this is what threads into the nipple. Now, what's cool though, is I thought that these would be glued on to the, to the carbon there, but they're not. They're actually a, uh, a physical interference fit. Each end of the spoke is tapered like this diagram, and it's tapered within this little fitting in here to prevent the actual fitting from slipping off, which is really cool. And you can actually see this taper for yourself if you get hold of uh, one of these spokes, which is, uh, which is cool. So I measured it. With, uh, with one of these calipers, and I'll throw up some pictures. But just to show you, the carbon actually pokes out of the end just a tiny bit of that cap so you can measure it. And you'll see the top there measures about 2.8 millimeters in diameter, and just underneath the cap measures two millimeters in diameter. So yeah, you can basically see the taper for yourself. Honestly, a really ingenious design and circumvents quite a lot of the shortcomings traditionally associated with carbon spokes. A really clever solution, if you ask me, and I thought it was really cool. Right then, let's check out these hubs because these are pretty primo, let me tell you. So each hub is machined from a single aluminium billet, which is pretty cool. And in fact, each of them has an individual serial number associated with them. So if you ever had a problem with one of your hubs, you could call up Fastbots, quote that number, and they'd know exactly which hub you were talking about, which is cool. And the machining, is really, really lovely on the front and the back. And uh, yeah, due to the nature of the carbon spokes, essentially the end of the spoke here is much wider than a regular steel spoke. Fastports couldn't use just generic off the shelf hubs. They had to custom design these in house, which is pretty cool. Now the weatherproofing on both uh, both hubs front and rear is some of the best I've ever, <laughs> I've ever used. So yeah, each end cap, has an O-ring inside it, which you might be able to see there. If not, I'll throw up some pictures, which, um, yeah, seals around the axle, and that's, that's pretty standard. But in addition, each bearing, including both of the bearings inside the free hub, they're protected by an additional labyrinth style rubber seal. And if it doesn't show up, I'll, again, I'll throw up some pictures. But each of these seals is pre-greased from the factory, and this really prevents water from getting to the bearings. And in my experience, it really, it really does work. So I've been out on some really wet and windy rides with the with these wheels, and the bearings are still super duper fresh. So yeah, really impressive stuff. So these hubs use Taiwanese TPI bearings throughout on the, on the front and the back, and these are top notch. They use a variety of bearing with a more expensive non-contact rubber seal, which uh, yeah should reduce rolling resistance. And these are actually the same high quality bearings used by DT Swiss in many of their kind of higher end hubs, if you know those guys. Plus, uh, yeah, Fastboss are also partnering with the pretty iconic uh, ceramic ceramic speed. So yeah, you can throw in some of their tippity top notch ceramic bearings into these hubs as well, if you fancy it. Now the free hub body here, this is made of aluminium to keep the weight down, which is pretty, pretty standard. But if I zoom in, you'll see that Fastports has included not just one, but two 
anti-bike guards there and I've never seen that on the Freehub body before. Now there is a little bit of cassette bike present but I suspect with both of these guards on the Freehub this is going to last many many thousands of miles before needing to be replaced. Now it would have been a hell of a lot cheaper for Fastports not to have included these and I doubt many people would have really noticed but it just it's, it's a nice little touch and it goes to show that Fastports are thinking about longevity with this wheel set. But yeah if you do need to buy a replacement give Fastports a shout and they'll be able to sort you out. Right, one last, one last thing to mention with these hubs, they only come in a center lock disc variety. So you'll see I'm running these pretty fancy Shimano Frezza rotors here. It's a freezer. Do you understand the, the joke? Um, this is the rear, so it's a slightly smaller 140 millimeter rotor. But if you do run six bolt rotors, then you can get yourself a little adapter like the one on screen and they should fit these hubs no problemo. But yeah, all in all, the whole wheel set construction, proper top drawer stuff. Really nice materials, really nice design, pucker. Right, let's quickly drop in the Freehub sound test. So here we go. So yeah, probably sounds quite loud, but actually out on the road, it's not too bad. So it's not super obnoxious, which I really like. Right, okay, so servicing these hubs, really straightforward actually, which is, uh, yeah, pretty cool. So the uh, end caps here, I've pulled them off. So there's obviously one on each end, so I've pulled them off. And then once that's done, you can quite easily pull the free hub out. So getting that off is straightforward, just like slide it off. And yeah, you can replace that if you need to. Now, in terms of getting the bearings out of here, it's actually pretty straightforward as well and follows a similar pattern to a lot of the other hubs that I've serviced in the past. So what I'll need to do is knock this axle and that will push the bearing out the back. So <laughs> I did this before and basically I should be doing this with a rubber mallet because this, this axle is, um, yeah, it's made of aluminium. So you don't want to smack it too hard. Uh, like directly with a hammer or it's going to damage it. So you should use a rubber mallet for this, but I don't, I don't have one. So I'm going to use a t-shirt here and a, a hammer over the top. So give me a second and I'll try and get this bearing out. And there we go. Simple as that really. So you can see here it's pushed the bearing out. Let me grab that out there. Right, there we go. So I'm not sure if you'll be able to see, but there's some lips on this on this axle. Um, like a lot of the other axles that I've kind of serviced in the past. And it just pushes the, uh, the bearing out. Hopefully you can see that. And also, let me pop this down. You'll also be able to see this fell out too. So this little um, gasket, it's that labyrinth style seal, which I mentioned before. So I'll throw a picture up because it's difficult for me to show you here. But there's a, yeah, on each of the bearings, there's also an additional seal and you can see that here and it, it really helps to keep keep the water out. Yeah, now if I wanted to get the other bearing out the other side, I would just post this axle through um, and then knock it out from the other side. And that's how you replace the bearings on the back, which is cool, so that's pretty straightforward. Now the front follows a very similar pattern. So again, I've got the front hub here and you just pull the cap off and there's an axle running through it, which, um, yeah, so follows a very similar pattern to the back. And all again, all I would need to do is take the, uh, the, the hammer and kind of knock, knock the bearing out and I could push the bearings out of each side. So yeah, in terms of serviceability, these hubs are pretty, yeah, pretty easy, pretty straightforward, which is cool. But I mean, hopefully with all those labyrinth style seals everywhere, you, um, yeah, won't need to replace the bearings too often. Should keep them nice and dry, even, even riding in the wet. So yeah, all in all, hub serviceability, yeah, pretty damn good, gotta say. Right then, cost and weight. Two pretty uh, crucial metrics. And weight-wise, these are my lightest wheel set by a pretty, pretty wide margin, actually. So 1394 grams for the naked wheel set. Pretty flipping, impressive stuff, if you ask me. But these wheels are tubeless. If you went for the tubular variety, of these uh, of these wheels even lighter 1205 grams for the yeah for the tubular variety honestly so so lightweight but still these are pretty cutting edge wheels so you will pay a little bit of a premium for them around fifteen hundred dollars for this wheel set it's, it's pretty up there i know but i do want to demonstrate to you that for this for this quality and caliber 
of wheel set. It's, it's actually really good value. Um, now, I did also manage to wangle you quite a decent discount uh, on top of that price if, if you did want to get your hands on a pair. But more about that at the end of the video. For now, let's compare these here to some name brand options. Okay, so I've tried to find some disc specific carbon wheel sets here on Sigma Sports that are 45 to 50 millimeters deep and are tubeless compatible as well. So let's start with some of the cheapest wheels I could find in that category. Wheel set from a company called Vell at 700 quid or around 975 bucks. So these are 50 millimeters deep, so a little bit deeper than the Fast Sports ones, but 24 steel spokes front and rear and the wheel set weight 1,610 grams. So over 200 grams heavier than the Fast Sports ones. So Bit, bit cheaper, but much heavier than the Fast Sports. Moving up to Mavic Cosmic SL45s, a really well-respected wheel set, actually. Um, and these come in at 1,050 quid, so 1,500 bucks. Pretty much the same price as the Fast Sports wheels. So what do you get for that? So these are, uh, yeah, so you can see here, these are identical specs here to the Fast Sports wheel set. The difference being they've got 24 steel spokes, front and back, and the wheel set weight, 1,575 grams, so 180 grams heavier than the Fast Sports wheels for basically the same price. So hopefully you can see the value of these Fast Sports wheels should be shining through at this point. Envy, now Envy makes some cracking wheels um, and a lot of cyclists drool <laughs> over Envy wheels, but they're pretty premium and these are no exception. 1,850 quid, so two and a half thousand bucks for these. Um, so same, same rim depth, 45 millimeters deep, but again, 24 spokes front and back, and they're made of steel. So the wheel set weight here, 1,540 grams. So that's uh, kind of 145, 150 grams heavier than the Fast Sports wheels for considerably more money. Um, moving up to lightweight. So <laughs> lightweight are some of the pioneers in putting carbon spokes on wheels. So let's have a quick look at the specs here. The rim is pretty comparable. It's a little bit deeper, but it's a little bit narrower as well. So they've got 20 carbon spokes, front and rear, so the same as the Fast Sports ones, and these come in at 1,380 grams, so 15 grams lighter than the Fast Sports wheels, but the cost is astronomical, so 5,400 quid, so that's over seven and a half thousand dollars for these wheels, plus the, the spokes, as I mentioned, are they're bonded to the rim. So if you break one, you're, <laughs> yeah, you're pretty scuppered. Um, anyway, hopefully you can see that when you compare the fast boards to some of these branded wheel sets, the value should start to show through. So yeah, interesting comparisons, I think. Right then, we are out on the, uh, on the, on the open road this evening, and I've got a bit of a funny camera setup here, essentially. It's just a GoPro on a stick, uh, but yeah, we'll make it work. So what are these wheels like to ride? Well, when I first put them on the bike, my first thought was, wow, these wheels, they, they spin up super fast. I felt like I could accelerate at a much higher rate. So I felt like these would make me a much kind of faster cyclist as a result. And these are the lightest wheels that, uh, that I've ever tried really. So the logic kind of held for me. And in fact, this is the kind of logic that was bought into by quite a lot of the cycle industry for, for many years. There was this idea that lower rotational mass in the wheels was really important. So this is the, this is the notion that dropping weight from your wheel set makes much more of a difference and makes you a much faster cyclist than dropping that same amount of weight from anywhere else on the bike. However, more and more research is coming to the conclusion that whilst the lower rotational mass does make a small difference when compared to kind of dropping that mass from anywhere else on the bike. Yeah, over the course of a, a race or a longer ride like the one I'm on today, the difference is apparently pretty negligible. So dropping weight from your bike as a whole, as a kind of whole system, does make a difference. There's no real question about that. So for example, if you were to swap out your stock aluminum training wheels for these pretty tasty carbon ones I've got on today, you could look to drop maybe 600 grams and you would feel that as kind of a, an overall difference on the bike. But this idea that a lower, well, a lighter wheel set spins up faster and therefore makes you a faster cyclist as a result of that, that kind of argument doesn't really hold much weight these days. But still, with all that being said, what do these, what do these wheels actually feel like out on the road? Well, frankly, even if the science doesn't, doesn't fully support it, these wheels definitely feel a lot faster than any of the other wheel sets that I've tried they just feel really lively, especially on the climbs. 
and in and in the sprint. I think a lot of that is probably down to the fact that these are just very stiff wheels and those carbon spokes have definitely made a difference in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, with these with these wheels on the bike, it does well, it feels like it transforms it and the bike just feels a lot snappier and a lot more responsive, if you see what I mean. But yeah, ultimately these wheels feel pretty flipping fantastic out on the road. Now with that increased stiffness, the ride is a little harsher than some of the other wheels that I've got, but that's to be expected in my opinion with those super stiff carbon spokes down there. But bottom line, these wheels are super light and they're super stiff. I mean, <laughs> undeniably, that is a pretty banging combination for a, for a wheel set, if you ask me. So yeah, these, these are my new benchmark for a quality carbon wheel set. No question about that. So yeah, I'm, sh I'm sure you'll be able to tell. Freaking loving the, <laughs> these wheels. Lightweight, super stiff, and look the freaking business on the bike as well. Uh, but still, one other thing, and I mentioned it at the very beginning of the video, I wasn't really prepared for just how stable and planted these wheels feel in really high winds. These wheels are so stable! So I've been riding these wheels since late March, early April this year, around here in, in, in Cornwall, and yeah, I have had all weathers, trust me. And yeah, something about the rim profile, or maybe the fact there are fewer spokes, a crosswind does not phase these wheels at all. Now, I know 45 millimeters is not massively deep, but most of the wheel sets that I've kind of ridden around, around this depth can get a little squirrely in a crosswind, especially if you're booking it downhill really fast in, in kind of high winds. I feel like I can sometimes get a little bit of a wobble on, but with these, no, no such funny business. They're just so stable and planted. I couldn't really point to any particular facet of these wheels, which would suggest they'd be so stable in, in, in a crosswind. But yeah, just something about the way they behave gives me a real sense of confidence, and I have no problem taking these out in really gusty winds, which uh, <laughs> yeah, is perfect for cycling here in the UK, basically. Right, before we jump into the, uh, the final thoughts, I just wanted to pop in and say I was, I was actually on a podcast the other day, which is pretty cool. So these guys, Nick and Andy, run 5339. It's a cycling podcast geared towards kind of amateur cyclists and maybe people like you that cycle for a hobby. Um, and they got me on to talk about some YouTube stuff and uh, some, ch some cheap Chinese carbon fiber experiences and stuff like that. So if you want to listen to ya boy <laughs> on, a, on a podcast, then yeah, I'll put a link in the video description. And I think the episode goes live on the 28th of June. Um, so yeah, check that out if you fancy it. But that aside, let's crack on with the final thoughts. Right then, a few final bits. Uh, the box, the box they came in, yeah, amazing. Really, really sturdy. They were very well packaged, which is cool. These come with an 18 month warranty from Fastports. Uh, they also come with a handful of extra carbon spokes and some additional nipples, plus a few other little goodies as well. In case you accidentally break a spoke, you can, you can replace it. The rider weight limit is 120 kilograms, which considering there's only 20 spokes per wheel, I think it's very impressive. And lastly, I wanna mention the setup of the tubeless tires. Now the Elite wheels that I showcased in the last episode, and I'll put a link in the corner there, these ones here actually, these had a bit of an issue when it came to the tubeless setup. Basically, when the tire was deflated to add the sealant inside, the tire would pop itself off of the rim, which, yeah, is not really meant to happen. Boom, there we go. You can see it right there. The tire's just popped off the rim. But yeah, these fast bought rims behind me, these were absolutely dreamy to set up. The tires went on first time and I didn't even need to use my air shot tank to get the tires mounted to the rim. And that's a bit of a test that I do to check the quality of the wheels. If I can successfully mount a tubeless tire using just a track pump like this, then it tells me that the bead shelves and the kind of inner profile of that rim is really well constructed. And that was the case with these wheels here. And it was also the same for my older set of fast sports rims that I reviewed in 2019. I mentioned earlier those could be mounted with just a track pump as well so yeah pretty good stuff so yeah i'm sure you can tell i think these wheels are top 
I think, I think these, are, these are primo wheels. There's no question about that, if you ask me. Now, they are more expensive than the stuff I usually feature, but what I like about Fastboards is that you're not just paying for a name, you're not just paying for a brand. Every penny you spend on these wheels is going to getting you a, frankly, beautifully crafted set of wheels. Um, so yeah, that about wraps it up for this wheel set. If you do want to get your hands on a pair, I've been chatting with the rep over at Fast Sports uh, called Sandy, and she's been super lovely, really, really helpful. But I've been trying to get you hooked up with a tasty discount. So Fast Sports have been selling these wheels in the Chinese domestic market for the last few years, and apparently they've gone down an absolute storm. And <laughs> this is the this is the first time they're opening up to global customers. So if you use the link in the description down below, that'll take you to the web shop. That'll get you 10% off the regular retail price. But if you also slap in the code TRACEVELO100, <laughs> so if you put TRACEVELO100 in a checkout, that'll get you an extra 100 bucks, 100 buckaroonies off the, off the, off the cost. <laughs> I thought that. Oh, that was really cool. I was quite chuffed with that. Um, so yeah, while this is like a review video, I, I still like the fact that I can use this little like platform or whatever that I've built here to potentially save some of you out there a chunk of change. Um, I'm, I'm, I think that's quite cool myself. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, one more thing as well. Uh, I freaking love reading the comments. I know every flipping YouTuber says that these days, but it's honestly my favorite thing to do. I'll just wake up in the mornings and have a scroll through of all the comments you've left. I, I love chit-chatting, like I, I love getting criticism in the comments as well, because often you guys know a hell of a lot more than I potentially do about bits and bobs. There was a lot of comments last video, for example, about using a bearing puller for the, for the, uh, the bearings on this front axle, because I didn't really know how to get them out. So yeah, honestly, I, I read them all and literally my favorite thing. So yeah, uh, leave me a comment, criticize me, call me, <laughs> call me names. I don't, I don't really mind. What? Whatever you want to do, really. And yeah, let me know. Would you would you buy these wheels? That's something you would consider. Um, yeah. Talk to me. <laughs> anyway, um, that about wraps it up. I think I'm getting a bit stir crazy in here. Um, so yeah, subscribe if you like this kind of stuff. Hit the like button if you've got any. Uh, uh, well, no, sorry. Hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. And if you've got any questions or comments, um, then yeah. Do. Leave me one of those too. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna go outside because I think I'm running out of oxygen in this little room. Uh, so yeah, that's it. There's nothing left for you here. There's nothing left. I'll see you lot next time. <laughs> see you later. <laughs> Flipping out. Right, one last thing before you lot go. So um, basically one of the very first bikes that I built on this channel um, was for my friend Kang and it actually got stolen the other day so he had it in his bike lockup out the back of his flat in in Clapham and they just used a circular saw to like buzz through the D-lock that he was using to lock it up and, and they nicked it so yeah if you're around uh, Clapham or central London and you see a completely black unbranded carbon road bike uh, it's rim brake and it's got 10 speed Tiagra and prime 30 wheels on it and I'll throw up some pictures obviously but if you <laughs> yeah if you see it then I've linked Linked my email in the video description. So if you yeah take a photo of it and maybe where you saw it, and and let me know. Maybe we can get it back to its rightful owner. Maybe Can can get it back. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> yes, I did a bit of a long shot, but maybe one of you lot will see it out on your travels uh, around London. Um, anyway, that is all for now. So keep your eyes peeled <laughs> out there, and I'll see you next time. Ciao ciao. Look at that worm. It's huge! I've got to show you this worm. Hang on. Look at that! It's massive! It's massive! Ugh. Countryside living. Gotta love it.